The incredible development of vaccines at a rapid pace in the history of humankind is unprecedented. Chris and Mona, thank you so much for joining us today. Chris, I think I'll start with you. Can you give us a breakdown of the timeline for setting up the pod from the conception of your freezer farm idea? I think you talk about from farm to arms uh, in the fall to the launch of the pod in January and what all went into that process. I, I can, Th thank you, President Robbins. And so from the, from the freezer farm to the arm as an incident commander, I've been heavily involved with our incident command team really since it was uh, put together back in May. Took over as incident commander back in September. And at that time, there was an article you know, in the paper regarding the Pfizer freezer farm in Kalamazoo, Michigan, uh, in which they were taking a football field full of minus 80 freezers. And we really knew that this thing was real. And so what we did was go ahead and forecast ahead uh, constantly with our incident command team, looking ahead, what are challenges are we gonna have? How do we address those? Uh, and in this case, we went ahead and ordered six minus 80 freezers. Uh, we ordered three of the minus 20 freezers that Moderna requires, the Pfizer requires the minus 80. And then we went ahead and took a vacant space at the Arizona Health Science Center in the basement. And within a month period of time, converted that to a freezer farm where we could house all these freezers. Matter of fact, we can house 1.6 million doses of the vaccine. And then as we fast forward to uh, January, just the, the week of the 11th, we were informed that the county wanted to go ahead and set up a pod here uh, at the University of Arizona. We had one week, one week, uh, the day after Martin Luther King Day on the 19th, we went live. And it just takes a great team effort of so many people throughout this university with our incident command structure, operations, logistics, and all the other details to go ahead and have this pod come up live. And I say this every morning at our briefing that the determination and compassion of the Wildcat Nation uh, is just doing outstanding on protecting our, our community members here in uh, Southern Arizona. Well, thanks, Chris. It's, it's truly a remarkable story. And I, I am so grateful to you uh, and your leadership of the incident command uh, system and how that's uh, played out and allowed us to get through this pandemic. So Mona, how in the world did you get involved in this? You're from public health. Uh, maybe say a few words about why public health is so important and how you got involved in this thing called incident command system. <laughs> that That's right, President Robbins. I think, you know, at the inception, this actually, for me, started about 12, 12, 12, 12, 14 years ago when I got my bachelor's degree. I'm a wildcat, core and core, uh, got my degree. But one of the things I really became interested in uh, here on campus was emergency preparedness. We actually, as a, as a university, many people will be surprised to know that we actually had an emergency response team, a group that's been working over the years to try to plan for these efforts. And so emergencies became really at the crux of the whole public health world due to the evolving, you know, Katrina and other natural disasters. And so how I kind of got into this was uh, one, of, one of the hats that I wear prior to COVID has been really cheering this group that's been looking at this situation of if there was ever an emergency that required us to distribute medications or vaccines to our campus community and our southern Arizona community, how do we actually do that efficiently and safely? And so when when this project was, you know, when COVID kind of, you know, hit all of us uh, uh, in 2020, I was fortunate enough to be brought onto this team with Chris and many, many other experts. And this, you know, we started launching this effort response. And for me, when the vaccine came out, Chris and I just naturally connected. And I think it was a, it was, it's, it's a great collaboration because rolling out this type of vaccine, it's a logistics issue. It really is. It's a logistics issue, but it's also a public health issue because at the end of the day, what are we trying to do? We're really trying to make sure that people get this intervention as quickly as possible so that we can start looking at life post COVID. This is history in the making, but we are lending our talents 
to go ahead and put a uh, end to this pandemic, hopefully uh, forever. Um, so we're very proud. We're very proud to be part of this. Uh, we're proud to, to work the hours. Uh, and we'll look back on this and say, the one thing is everybody came together as one team, one University of Arizona team working hard to go ahead and take care of our residents of Pima County and the state of Arizona. Uh, we're very proud of that and very humble too. Thank you for your service that you're giving uh, all of our students, our faculty, our staff, and uh, the residents of uh, Southern Arizona. It's part of our land grant mission and the two of you exemplify that uh, beyond belief. So thank you for being with us today. Thank you, President Robbins.